Good morning. It is day four of boot camp, and we are going over designs and campaigns today. It's by far my favorite day of boot camp because I majored in marketing. So I love this um, designs platform that we have built into command. I hope you guys will as well. We're going to be covering a lot of content today. We're going to start with designs. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to head over into campaigns after that. And then we're going to take another quick break and have a little bit of bonus content um, geared towards teams. So if you are an admin of a team, if you're the rainmaker of a team, and you want to come and take a look at team campaigns and lead routing, we're going to be covering that at 12. If you are not one of those people, you're welcome to stay and listen, but otherwise you can just hop off um, at 12. So we have logged in at agent.kw.com and we are going to head into designs. Don't forget, if you're having a hard time identifying these icons, you can hover over them or you can always click the white background on the, the white KW on the red background to pop those out. And we are going to head into designs. All right. So guys, make sure that you ask questions. Um, this is really important, right? So taking it back to the millionaire real estate agent, as we've been discussing it this week, um, Gary Keller says that we should be marketing based and prospecting enhanced. Well, part of marketing is social media posts, um, listing flyers. We have a branded magazine. We have all these things that we can do to put ourselves in front of people. So really make sure that you have a good understanding of this. Again, are there other platforms where you can do designs like Canva? Yes. There are, and if you love Canva, that's okay. You're welcome to use Canva, but I want to make sure that I'm showing you guys um, all of the designs that you can make and where you can use those. So the first thing that I wanna go over once we're here in designs is kind of a setup, right? Doing a little bit of house cleaning here. So you can see when I came to the designs platform that it's showing you all of my recent designs on this page recently, we got an update, which is good for me because I have, let me move my Zoom bar, 852 designs. Um, recently, we got the ability to bulk delete. So I can click all these and then I can come down to this lower right corner and click delete if I needed to delete these. So this is a recent feature that we got, which I really, really like. If you've not made any designs yet, you're not going to see anything on this screen. Um, we have filters, so if we're looking for a specific design type, we can check for that. We can see a list view as opposed to this card view. Um, and before we go any further, the first thing I want to show you guys how to do is set up your assets in designs. So the first thing we need to do is come into the upper right corner and click create design. Okay. We are going to choose either social or print. Either one of these will work. I'm just going to stick with social and click continue. So take note of what happens to my screen. Currently we're in command. You can see our command applets over on the left-hand side of the screen. Once I proceed here, you're going to see those applets drop away because we have now moved into the designs platform. So this is always where I'd like to tell you guys, sometimes we might be working on a few different things, right? And as you can see, the designs platform kind of takes us out of that command ecosystem. So you can have multiple command windows open and I quite often do have multiple command windows open. So if you're working in designs, but you also were cleaning up your database or something like that and working in contacts or tasks, or something of that nature, then you can in fact have two command windows opened simultaneously. And I love you all. And if any of you want to turn your cameras on and, and hang out with me, that would be awesome. I understand if you can't, but it would be great if you did. So now that we're here in designs, right? The first thing I want you guys to do is go to your assets. So if you're following along, we clicked on our designs applet. It's a little canvas with a paintbrush. We clicked create design in the upper right corner. We chose print or social. That brought us into the designs platform. And now we have clicked 
asset at the top. Okay, so we came into designs. We click create design in the upper right corner. We chose print or social. Clicked create design. It brought us into designs and we are now into our assets. Okay. So the first thing that we have in our assets are colors and fonts. So you can see this main color palette right here. These are the colors that I usually use for my branding. These other palettes I've created just as we've gone through. So I want to show you how to create a color palette. And shortly when we create a design, I will show you where that comes into play. Okay. So we can come up here and click add color palette. And we get a blank color palette here. So I can rename this and maybe this is um, fall colors. So maybe we're going to do some fall specific designs and we want some oranges and we want some, let's see, like browns, the color of fall leaves here. Then we can go through. I'm just showing you guys examples so you can see how it gets set up. Get a nice gold color in there. There you go. So you can set up as many color palettes as you would like, depending on what you are working on, right? So color palettes get used. Um, if you've ever seen my email signature, that came from command. It was originally red. However, this dark teal is my primary color. Um, so I changed my email signature to this color from this color palette. So any questions about setting up a color palette? I have a feeling you guys are gonna be really quiet with me again today. No questions? I need to make sure I pull up my chat. So you don't have to stick to just the red and um, black and white? So that's a great question. Always make sure that you're looking at that um, KW Connect guide when it's for like a social media post or something no you don't that's why we have a white kw logo and a black kw logo and a gray and white kw logo right so when we go mm -hmm. to connect we can hover over resources and go to marketing and once we click into logos and branding at the top we have our identity and style guide so it kind of shows you the standards that we're supposed to be using. Now, would I make a yard sign not have any KW red on it? I probably would not. But as far as like postcards or social media posts or a flyer for a listing, as long as I have my Keller Williams logo on there, I'm legit, right? Okay. Makes sense? Also, yeah, it makes sense. And also, do you, how do you know, like, you just, I guess, uh, I don't know how to word this, but would you just, uh, do you just post random thoughts you have or how do you know what to post? I will help you out with that, I promise. So okay. in the second half of the class, we're gonna do some posting ideas and I will give you some tips and tricks on what to post. Uh, <laughs> and I teach whole classes on that too, okay? Okay. On just that. That's a great question though, I know. It's, it's a big thing to take on, right? Big thing to take on. Good question, though. Yeah, because I was wanting to post something, but I'm like, but what do I post? Well, I'm going to show you some really <laughs> easy stuff to post here in just a little bit. Okay. okay. All right. So also here we can do font. So if you're coming up with your own brand, I know, for instance, Jennifer is in here. She's um, the, the boss, um, the director of operations for James Redden's team and Douglas Redden Real Estate, and they have, you know, their own branding and their own colorway and all that kind of fun stuff. So if you have your own font that you want designed and you have a web designer that did it for you, you can upload that font here, okay? So you can come in, you can find a font on the web and purchase it if you want, or if you had somebody design it for you and they sent it to you, you can upload it as long as it's in one of these five formats, okay? So that's pretty much it for colors and fonts as long as we don't have any questions. <laughs> Jennifer. Oh, Jennifer. All right. So images. Now, here is where we can upload images that we're going to be using in our design. So when you're thinking of designs, think of all the things we're going to be making. Flyers. We have a branded magazine, your listing presentation, your buyer consultation, 
um, social media posts, door hangers, all kinds of stuff. So anything that you might want to use in that branding, you can go ahead and upload it here. And what this saves you from is that each time you go to create something, you don't have to search your computer for that picture that you meant to save, right? So go ahead and take the time to set up these assets. So you're going to see, I've just uploaded this multiple times so that you guys could see it, but we can also set up folders, right? So I have some cityscapes um, that I use on my website. We saw those yesterday. So I could upload those here if I was going to use them in pieces of my marketing, right? I have different headshots of mine. I've got some with a transparent background. I've got some in the portrait shape and some in the square shape, okay? Because different designs I found have different use cases for my headshot, right? And I know I'm going to get this question because everyone always asks, how did I remove the background from my headshot? I personally, doesn't mean you have to do this. I'm sure there are other ways to do it, but I just go to Google and say remove BG and it brings me here and I upload whatever the photo is from my computer. I'll just grab something like my daddy. So you can see it work and boom, it took the background out. And then I can just download the picture. And now I have that picture with no background. Good deal. Everyone always asks me that. So I just like to go ahead and throw it out there. So we can create different folders, but any images that you think you might be using over and over again, like I, I do mo multiple social posts with commands. So I have screenshots of all the different screens and command. I do stuff with Keller Williams, Winston-Salem's leadership sometimes, so I have their headshots. So you can have folders set up in here for yourself. So any questions on images, like your, you know, all kinds of stuff can get brought in here. Good? Text. So this is going to save you from typing stuff a lot. <laughs> so your name, your email, your phone number, your website, um, your app code. We looked at those on Wednesday. Um, any of that kind of stuff. If, you, if you're going to be dropping your biography into different things, your office address, your license number. Um, I've noticed in some of the designs, they have a block kind of like this of text where it's your name, phone number. You can go ahead and create these in here. So as you're making designs, if you make a specific flyer and you're like, you know, I see that it's in this block format, then you can come in here, create a new field, I usually just come down to the bottom and choose other for whatever I'm making. And this could be like a contact block. I already got one, but I'll go ahead and make it again. So if I want to do like my name and my phone number, my email, and my website. Then I have that and I can save it, okay? And I will be able to pop that into my designs. So I just wanted to show you guys that really quickly. Next up is logos. So I showed you all yesterday where you can go and get these different logo colors. Um, I'm in three different market centers. Most of you probably are not. So I'm just gonna open up one. So you can see I have all these different versions of the KW Elite and Winston-Salem logo. This is where my license is. That's why I opened this one first. Um, I have some with the white background, some with the transparent background, and I have them all uploaded here because depending upon the design that I'm making, I might want a different color. If it's got a really brightly colored background, I might want to use this all white logo with no background, right? So if you didn't see where we went and got those the other day, we went to KW Connect, just like we did a few minutes ago. We hovered over resources, went into marketing, then we came to logos and branding. We scrolled down the screen until we get to market center logos, okay? And then you can search by the name or the number of your market center. So here's 994 Elite. I know that's me, so I can click download and it will download every color away of logo that KW has for our company, okay? 
and then you can upload those here into your brand assets. So any question on the logos, we good? Cool. All right, elements. This is just like stickers and stuff. I dropped the Facebook logo in here. Um, you could upload anything you wanted in here that you might want to pop into a design. Videos. Um, video is the way of the world now, folks. We all know that. So if you get really good at doing lives or if you do like Mr. Ken Pozek out of Florida, who I love following on YouTube and I recommend that you do it too. He's an awesome agent out of Florida. Um, he has this really funny intro video. It's just one minute long that's talking about him and his business um, with some comedy behind that. If you have a video that you want to use and stick into emails and stuff like that, you can upload it here, either via YouTube or you can upload the MP4 from your computer so that you can pop it into various designs. Last but not least is files. I'm, I'm always candid with you guys. I've told you that. I haven't seen where I'm going to use these files yet. So working with real estate agents pretty sure is what I uploaded here because I need that sometimes. Um, once I find out where I'm going to put this, um, then I can let you know, but you can upload it here, okay? So best practice, get in here, set up your assets before you start going to make designs. Do I have any questions on assets? Because we've got a lot to cover today, so I want to move forward. Going once, going twice, sold. Okay, so let's move back to templates here. All right. So K-Score is the Keller Williams School of Real Estate. If you haven't heard about it, check it out. Um, if you're going to do anything to grow your profit share, that is a great thing that you can do is promote K-Score and let your friends, family, neighbors, whoever know um, that they can now take pre-licensing for free through the Keller Williams School of Real Estate. It is online live classes. Um, so that can save them some coin and maybe you can get some people growing into the world of real estate, get them to join KW and grow your profit share tree. So K scores up there at the top right now because it just came out. Next up is listings. So this is where you're probably going to spend quite a bit of time is doing stuff with your listings. So you can see you have multiple opportunities to reach out to the people you know through social media for a listing. That's what makes listings so great. There are multiple marketing opportunities in conjunction with the listing. So we have coming soon, just listed, for sale, under contract, price updates, which y'all haven't had to see very often now, but trust me, it's coming. Um, I've been in real estate since 2008, so I've had to do lots of price improved homes over the years. Um, we have open houses and we of course have just sold. So that's multiple touch points on one property that we can um, hit our marketing with, right? So let's look at coming soon. Y'all bear with me, my hair is all over the place today. Probably need a haircut. As Jennifer calls it, my Disney princess hair. All right, so we have coming soon. One cool thing in here you're going to see is they have these sized for different things like social stories, social squares, right? We have some social wides for Facebook stuff. Squares, you can sort through here in all the different ones. So what KWRI does is they give us multiple options here and they actually kind of track what we do um, with designs. And so they're taking away stuff that never gets used and adding more content that does get used a lot that looks you know, similar to it. But what's cool is that they've resized it because if you weren't in real estate previously and using social media, um, you wouldn't know that we used to have to Google search what size is a Facebook picture. And then we would have to go into publisher, whatever place that we were making our design. And we would have to make the design that size so that we would know it would fit into that platform. And then we'd have to do it again for Twitter. And then we'd have to do it again for Instagram. So it was a big old pain in the rear. You guys have them all right here for me, all right here in front of me, right? So let's just grab one. Um, let's do this one. I'm going to click use. Okay. So say this is your listing. Interiors of listings are 
trending right now, right? So you're going to see a lot of interior photos and man, do I wish I was there. Um, but nonetheless, I am not. So what I want to show you is if it is your listing and you have already put it into the MLS, Okay, so I'm going to go back to that listing that we were using. Maybe I might pick a different listing today. Let me, let me find us another listing in the MLS. Obviously, if it was your listing, you would know. I just don't have listings, so I have to look one up, right? So bear with me while we do that. Go into my offices, active listings. Let's go with, since we're doing designs, let's just go all out today. Let's get something really fancy. Here we go. 4650 Cherry Hill Lane. Let's give a shout out to Roy Determine for having such a beautiful listing. So 4650 Cherry Hill Lane, that's what we're gonna use. Okay. So I'm gonna come over to the left-hand side of my screen and click KWLS. That's the Keller Williams listing system. Okay, so if you put it in the MLS, it syndicates itself to the KWLS through the use of List Hub. So I'm going to look for 4650 Cherry Hill Lane. And that was in Winston-Salem. Remember, this is all over the country. So sometimes you have to be a little more detailed. Here it is. So I'm going to go ahead and click Select and check it out. I've got access to all of my MLS photos here, right? So now I can say, okay, I want the pool or I want this room or the steps, I don't know. But I want to replace this picture. So you see this blue box came around this picture and I'm gonna replace it with this picture by clicking that little recycle button, okay? Now, I think this looks cute. That's some serious milk money, right? But down here with this logo, I don't think that looks very good on that background. So now I can click that logo and what happens? My assets pop up, right? So now I can say mm, that gray on black just is not doing it for me. Maybe I want my all white or maybe I want all black. No, let me try white and gray. Nope. So you can kind of pick the one. I'm going to stick with white. There you go. So now I have this design ready to post on Facebook. I can download it or, or Instagram or wherever. I can download it to my computer and put it on my social media platform of choice. I also have this share button. Okay. And we recently got Instagram added to this share button. This is going to be the first step of something that's coming down the road that I'll tell you about later when we're in campaigns, but I can share it to LinkedIn, Pinterest, Twitter, um, Facebook, wherever I feel like sharing it, right, right from here. So that's an option. And I will also show you a third option when we're in campaigns. So I'm just going to save this as command. Boot camp, day four of June. Um, social wide, so I know what it is. Okay, any questions on how I just did that? I'm gonna click done. So you can see that was a very simple design, right? Very simple. So let's look at some more. I'm gonna create design again. I'm going to click social again and click continue. And we're gonna go in and look at some of these others. I'm going to show you guys a really fun thing real quick, and then we're going to have to come off of social designs because we have a lot of stuff to cover today. Okay, so let's look at just sold. And I'm going to choose, no, I don't like that. I want one of these. There's one that I really like because I think it's pretty bold there. All right, so I'm going to use this just listed right here, the social story sized just listed. Okay. So I'm going to let this pop up. Obviously, if you have the photos from the photographer on your computer, you can upload the photo, right? We're going to let this take its time. 
the internet's not going to want to cooperate with us today. Let's close some stuff down. There we go. So I can take this photo and switch it out in the KWLS again. It was 4650 Cherry Hill Lane. And that was Winston-Salem. We needed that to make it pop up. Okay, so I'm going to change this for that. Okay. Now, I also have my listing details here. So I can actually click here and come down here and replace. I just don't need the USD there with that. And I can click this typewriter up here and look over to my left. And this actually has five bedrooms four bathrooms, right? I'm seeing all that info over here. Obviously, if it was your listing, you would know this info. Um, six, nine, oh, four square feet. And it was built in 1995. I can save the changes there, okay? Get this to pop up. Moving around on me. You do typewriter again and do 4650 Cherry Hill Lane. Save. Okay. So now I want to show you the cool thing. Got this bold looking design here. I'm going to come over to my left side and click this animation button. Okay. I have the choices of bounce in, swing in, fade in, all these different ones, right? That one's cool. I can change the duration of the animation and the in and out duration, and then I can play it again to see if I like it. Because why? Why would I wanna do this? Anybody in the chat, could you go over how you added those pictures one more time? Yes, I can. Why would we want to animate this post? To keep people on the post. Yes, Aunt. good. So the whole goal when we're posting things on social media is to stop people from scrolling, right? Exactly, it catches their attention. We're trying to stop people from scrolling because we all know we're sitting there on our phone and we're looking at Facebook and we're like, oh, cute dog. Oh, cool, their son graduated from high school and we're just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling through our phone, right? You're trying to make people stop. So you're going to catch more people's attention with something that's moving than you are with something that is still. So you do have the ability to animate these listings. I really do like this. You see me do this in your Facebook um, group sometimes. I don't do it every time because that could be overkill. Then you would start tuning that out. But every once in a while, I will animate things that I post, right? So if you're going to do this, the key is that you need to download as a video. So we're going to click download and change from the image to the video. And then we're going to download the video to our computer. And it does have to be uploaded into your social media platform, OK? Any questions on animation? Okay, so um, somebody asked me, could I go over how I added the pictures? Yes, if it was your own listing, I just don't have a listing, right? If I had a listing, I would be able to just look for my own listing, but I'm just having to borrow somebody else's. So I just look for the listing. So 46 Cherry Hill Lane, Winston-Salem. I looked for the listing, right? And then the MLS photos all populate up for me into the system. So then I'm going to click the thing that I want to replace. It's now got a blue box around it. And then I'm going to come over to the left and replace it with this little arrows that are going in a circle. And I can replace it with whichever photo. I can go through and try multiple ones to see which one I like the best until I pick the one that I want, right? So that is how you change those images. 
Good? Questions? Cool. All right, I'm going to click done on this one. And we're going to be back here. So now I'm going to, so you, social posts all work the same, right? That's how you do them. Whether it's got more information, less information, um, I could drop my photo into one of those, right? Let me show you that actually real quick. So I've already talked about how much we love ourselves as real estate agents. It's okay. I'm a real estate agent. I identify with you. I get it. Um, I want to show you where you can drop your photo into something. This will work with me and load. Okay, so say that you like this one. I'm not going to edit the picture. We already looked at how we did that. Um, come on. Here we go. So now I can come over here to images and I can go to my head charts and I can take this one with no background and just click it, which is what I did. And I can drop my photo down here in the corner if I want to. And then I could come over to text and I could find all my different text. I could add my own text or click on my assets here. And then I can go, okay, I wanna add this is that text block. I just clicked it. I can drop that down here next to my headshot, right? So if I wanted to have that, I can add stuff anywhere I want to. So fully customizable everything in here. Does that make sense? Just wanted to show you guys that. You're so welcome. Okay, so let's look at print. Okay, so... I'm going to click back on templates and I'm going to show you some print stuff. So I'm going to be in listings for sale. So say you got your first listing, congratulations, right? We're going to look under for sale and now look at the top. We have some door hangers. So if you were going to go door knocking, you could use the door hangers. We also have flyers. Okay. So mm, I'm going to use this one right here. No, I'm not. I lied. I'm going to use this one. I'm going to open this flyer. And I'm going to do the same thing, right? But now here's. I'm going to make this bigger too so you guys can see. Here's this lovely gentleman's headshot. I'm going to replace it with my headshot. Maybe. Stuff wants to cooperate with me. It doesn't. You can also drag this over into the box if your little recycle button doesn't want to work with you like mine didn't. Now I can click on agent name. And again, I'm in text, my assets, and I've got one that's just my name, so I can replace it. And it maintains the font. Then here's where I found that contact block before. And I was like, yeah, I'm not typing that every time. That sounds like a nightmare. So I think this is it. Nope, that one was just my website. Hold on. Hold, please. There it is. Okay, so there you go. Now I didn't have to type all that stuff out. My app code, click, and then I come over here and I can find my app code and replace that. I'm gonna click on this logo. I'm gonna replace it with my Keller Williams Realty Elite logo, like so. I can edit all this stuff out for the listing. Obviously, I would edit out this stuff from KWLS again, change the, you know, the address, the bedrooms, square footage, price all that, and I would change out this photo for the listing, but I showed you guys how to do that in social, so I'm not going to spend that time here. We're going to pretend like we did all the edits, okay? So now when I come to download this, I just want to make sure that I download it as a PDF for printing. I usually do include bleed, so it goes out as far as it can to the edges of my paper, and then I click download. 
and then I can send it to the printer. So I can put them in my listing, right? So we have those nice listing flyers, all different ones that we can use. You can see in the upper left corner, it says it's preparing and boom, I will have the PDF. So the cool thing about <clears throat> the flyers and the social media posts is once you determine, okay, this is, this is my brand. This is what I like. I really like this black. I think it looks sleek and I wanna use it. I love this flyer, right? That's what you're telling yourself. So every time that you come in, you don't have to replace everything, right? All your stuff is here. I'm just going to click done and save this. So say I got another listing on Saturday. I went on a listing appointment and I got one. And I'm like, okay, the photographer's going out there. I'm going to need to get my flyers and everything together. Photographer emails me the flyers. Then I'm just going to be able to come to this flyer I made Tuesday, click the three dots and make a copy of it or this post that I made, if I really like that, I can just click make a copy and it's going to make me a copy of it. And then I can just open it up and just change out the picture of the house and the address and post it. So it'll save you time. Does that make sense? Questions, comments, concerns, everybody good? Okay, cool deal. I've got one more to show you and social that I forgot. Some people love these, some people don't. It honestly depends on where you live and where you're selling. We talked about neighborhoods being powered by next door. Okay. So one of the other social posts that you can do are for buyers, neighborhood snapshots. I want to make sure I show you this. So maybe you like this one, I'm gonna click use. Okay, so picture yourself in whatever neighborhood that might be. Okay, I'm gonna use one that I know exists and makes you guys laugh because it is Buena Vista when you're in Winston-Salem instead of Buena Vista. All right, so we're gonna switch out my logo with the correct one. And now I need to replace this. So again, I'm going to KWLS. Instead of a listing, I'm looking for a snapshot. For now, we can do a neighborhood or a zip code. Okay, a neighborhood or a zip code. I do know that this neighborhood exists in next door. So I'm going to look it up. Okay, there it is. I mean, it's gonna take it a second to load. This is not the right size, right? This is. So now I can replace. It's going to take it a minute to stop being grainy. Um, but this is just a little quick post that you can, you can make this and you can upload it into Facebook for different neighborhoods that you're trying to target, right? Um, so I wanted to show you guys that. And last but certainly not least in social designs, I want to show you holidays. There's so much in here, you guys. I'm, I'm trying to get it all in for you before we move out of designs and into campaigns. So bear with me here, bear with me. The other one that we have a lot of is holidays. They've broken them down into months for us because they love us. So we now have the 4th of July coming up. And there we go. These are all the stuff that we have for July move into August, We've got some Labor Day. Um, I lied to you. Why is it not in there? <laughs> Sorry, everything's being slow for me today. I'm impatient. But it, it, either it's September, that's why I'm on okay. Either way, there we go, it wouldn't load. Um, we have all kinds of little holiday designs that we can use in here, which I love. We have luxury posts that you can use if you have a house that's a little bit nicer. Um, you might want to use some of these more sleek ones. They're under professional services and luxury. 
if you're going to use this luxury stuff, please make sure that you're designated as a luxury. Oh, I ain't think y'all all look alike to me. Hey, honey. <laughs> There we go. So if you're going to use this luxury stuff, make sure that you are actually a luxury agent. If you don't know the answer to that question, ask your leadership team. Okay. Because when you're using the luxury logo, you need to be a luxury agent. Um, we have some new designs at the bottom. We have some lead generation designs. So we have some client love. So get in here and explore, right? There's thank you cards. There's happy birthday social media posts. Um, if you get a really cool client testimonial, we looked at adding testimonials to our website yesterday, but if you get one that's really great, use one of these designs and post it on social media, right? We have event invitations. We have little expert advice ones like tax deductions. These are stories that have multiple pictures. That one has seven and this one has seven. Um, you know, do you want to know what your home is worth? That's a good way to get people to contact you. We have some I love KW stuff, right? Got Red Day. We've got number one KW because we usually are number one. So we have a lot of stuff in here that we can use. So come in here and take a look at it all, right? We've got some stuff to promote our website that we looked at yesterday. So there's some posts for that. And then the last thing I'm going to show you in this part of designs is our magazine. So we have listing presentations, we have buyer consultations. There are multiple page PDFs, multiple page, eight and a half by 11 paged documents. And our branded magazine is one of those, okay? So this is the one that we have right now. I'm gonna click use. You edit them all the same way. So no matter what you're going in to edit, if it's a multiple page PDF, it's going to be done this way, okay? So you can see we have 20 pages of this magazine. You can see it over here in the right lower corner. So we have three different um, covers to pick from. So if I decide that I like this one, I can just click the three dots here and delete that page. So I don't need three covers. And I can click these three dots and delete that page like so. Now I just have one cover. I'm going to come to the next page. Here's a note from me. So I'm going to take this picture. I'm going to replace it with my picture. I'm going to read this letter and make sure that I've edited everything that I need. So you can see they've got content in here for you. But it says spring is in full bloom and my R mission. Because if you're on a team, then it's our mission. If it's just you as an independent agent, then it's my mission. Right, so make sure that you're looking at what you're doing and going through and editing it. You have a page for the quarter in, in review. If you don't have numbers yet, delete, right? And then you have an article about spring cleaning. Then you can feature a listing if you have one to feature. If you don't, ask another agent if they'll let you feature your, their listing. Then you have another article, we get three, three articles. Then we have success stories. So these are testimonials. If you haven't sold anything yet, delete it, okay? Or if you're on a team, use one of your team's stories. That's okay too, right? Can feature multiple listings here and you can leave a thing about ask an agent. So what home improvements can boost my property value without bore, bore, mm -mm, burning a hole in my wallet? So you obviously it's, you know, paint. You give whatever your little take on that is down at the bottom or you can change the name. But nonetheless, once you've edited all the pages, you can download it and print it, right? Or one of my favorite things to do with it is you can click this share button and you don't want to share the design. This design means just this page. You see how it's showing just this page. You wanna change it to the project. You're gonna copy this link and you could like save the front cover of it as your picture. 
I'm just going to download that as a PNG, which is a picture. And then I can go to Facebook and post that picture and say, check out my magazine picture link. And if they click on the link, watch where it takes them to a digital version of your magazine where they can scroll through and read tips and tricks on spring cleaning, check out your featured listings, warm weather activities, right? Your patio, your sanctuary, they can go through and read your little magazine. Isn't that neat? So you can print it out or you can share it. You guys are so quiet. Does anybody think this is cool? Can I get an unmute or something in the chat? Anything? I think it's cool. <laughs> All right, good deal. All right, you guys are so different from last month's class. <laughs> last month's class was talking and talking and talking. I feel like I'm in here by myself. All right, so we've got that. And the same thing with the listing presentations, fire presentations, you can edit them the same way. You can download them and print them out. You can share them on the internet, on Facebook, on TikTok, on Instagram, whatever you want to do. Okay. So you've got those options. You can also make postcards in here. I'm not going to show you exactly the same editing functions. Um, and then you would download it. But when I show you direct mail postcards and campaigns, they have pre-made templates in there as well. So I'm going to show you those today instead of how to edit a postcard in here. So any questions on what we've gone over so far? One thing I want to show you in the separate command window that we have open is new and opportunities, listings only. Okay. If I go to create an opportunity that's a listing, right? Oh, I'm in my team. Pardon me. Let me switch myself back to my personal account. There we go. Okay, so if I'm in a listing, okay, I now have this tab at the top for marketing. So this is going to show me based on the phase and stage, we talked about phases and stages on Tuesday, what designs would be good for me. In this instance, the listing presentation, but not any social ads yet. But watch what happens if I click on one that's in active. Okay, if I open one up that I have in active and go to marketing, it's got trifolds, flyers, postcards, um, social media posts, and a um, social ads recommendation right down here at the bottom. So as you progress through a listing opportunity, there will be a marketing tab to give you recommended designs based on your opportunity phase. Okay. So just another way to get through designs. Remember, I told you guys, it's just like your cell phone. It's a big platform and everything kind of all works together, right? So just wanted to show you that you could get to designs that way as well. Okay. So I need to, I'm actually going to close this out. I want to show you the email designs really quick. We touched on these a little bit on Monday when we were looking at smart plans. This time when we create design, we're going to choose email. It takes us to a completely different spot. And it takes us to the 72 emails that KW provided to us. Get all the way to the bottom. There we go. So we have a home anniversary, promote your app, happy birthday, work with me buyer, work with me seller, um, modern, basic, any of the ones that say basic, they're just layouts for you to fill in whatever content you want. Okay, you have a layout for featured homes, you have some for just listed properties, and then you have someone for the holidays, like classic happy holidays, happy spring, happy Thanksgiving, Valentine's Day, right? So you have some content that's just ready made that you do not have to edit, right? So I'm going to open up this classic request for referral. It's highlighted now. I'm going to click next. Okay, anything that's got these little asterisks here is going to be populated by the things in your marketing profile. So we've looked at our marketing profile twice, right? 
That's where we go to change our headshots or any of that stuff, information about us. If we change our name, um, phone number, get a new phone number, whatever. If it's got asterisks, it's going to fill it in. So this just says for the love of real estate and relationships. Okay, so you can go through and read it. Again, asterisks, it's going to fill it in for you. Okay, it's going to fill this stuff in for you. So I'm going to come up to the upper right and click options and click preview. And it's going to show you it filled in my logo, it filled in my name and my contact information, and then it filled in this little footer for me at the bottom and this stuff down here for my legalities, right? So if it's got those asterisks there, it's going to fill it in. You can look at it in tablet format and cell phone format by switching those things at the top. But over here on the right, say I did want to send this email out to my database, right? Say I did want to send this out to my database, but I did make a video, okay? Then I can put this little widget here. I can grab it and pull it over to the left until I see the green line where I want it to be and I can let it go. And then I can click the edit pencil. This one has to come from Facebook. And I can put that video that I made right here into my email. Or I could add a picture or I could add a market snapshot. Any of the stuff over here, I can drag it and drop it into this where I want it to be and fill it in. Like if I wanted to feature a listing, right? So emails take you into kind of a different place than any of the other designs. So again, you create design, you're going to choose email and click continue. It's going to default you into those original Keller Williams emails. And we also have the ability to start from blank, right? That takes a little bit more work. I personally like using these layouts that are ready for me. Um, there is some good content in here. Class um, tax day is coming up. Um, get your house sell ready, refinancing, mortgage modifications, um, low budget projects, healthy home, financial health, chill your bills, right? This will be a good one because it's hot as blazes the last few days, okay? So those, you don't even have to do anything to them. They're ready. They're ready for you to use. Some of these other ones for open houses and stuff like that, you would want to make edits to. Does that make sense? Does anybody have any questions on the emails that are available? And then these emails can get used in campaigns where we're going next. And it can get used in smart plans, which we that's how we looked at it on Monday. When you're adding a step in a smart plan that is an email, you can either type the email, right? Just a typed out email, or you can choose from your designs. So you could put any of these designs in there and edit it at that point. Good? Quiet? All right. Good deal. Okay. So there we go. That takes us pretty much through designs. Um, we're going to take a five minute break. We got this done right on time and we're going to come back and look at campaigns. Let me get that timer going. And we'll be right back to look at campaigns, guys. Good deal. Okay, so now we're going to move ourselves into our campaign system. Make sure I can see you guys. There we go. Okay, all right, campaigns. <laughs> right, so click on this little megaphone here. where we're going to be getting out our message. Okay, so campaigns is another one of our applets that's got a lot of stuff happening in here. So someone was asking me earlier, what do I post on social media? Well, here's the deal. 
people do business with people they like. Okay. Do people like used car salesmen? Usually. No offense if you were ever a used car salesman. Probably not. Right. So we want to keep our social media 80% personal. Right. I'm with my son at baseball. I'm with my daughter at basketball. Look at my cute puppy. It's his birthday. And then 20% of our stuff is going to be business because we are trying to establish relationships with people, right? Relationships. We are not um, trying to bash people over the head and ask them if they want to buy, sell, or invest in real estate 24 hours a day because people are going to turn us off if that's the case. So for your social media, be a person, be human, show what you're doing, show that you're out, show that you took your kid with you to do door, door hangers, right? Show whatever you guys are doing. Yes. And you're also going to have some social media posts that are business related. So we do have some pre-built quick posts. So as I clicked on campaigns, up here at the top, it's showing me paid campaigns. But what we're going to look at first is social posts because social posts are free. And if it's free, it's for me, right? Lead with revenue. If you're not making a ton of money yet, don't go throw in a bunch of money at stuff. Build off of the people that you already know, okay? So we're gonna be reaching out to our sphere. If you're going to post through command to social media, you do have to have a Facebook business page. Okay, so I'm gonna head into Facebook. I get this question lots of times. I'm not saying you guys don't know the answer to this. I just wanna make sure that I tell you um, so that you know, okay? So over here on the left, you're gonna see, I'm just in my personal Facebook account, right? I'm, I didn't create a second account for my business. I'm in my personal Facebook account. We had steak last night. It was just Dakota's birthday. I was with my son at baseball. We had graduation dinner for my daughter, right? Social media post, keeping things light and fun with my friends and all the things that we do, okay? I'll also have a business page, same Facebook account, okay? Same Facebook account. So that is this page. On this page, I'm posting predominantly business stuff. Some of it's these quick posts. This is one of those quick posts as an example, okay? These are a lot of the quick posts just from where I've been doing this in class with you guys. I post stuff for holidays like April Fool's Day, right? Keep it light, keep it fun sometimes. My teenagers do always get me on April Fool's Day. They're little knuckleheads. Um, but they're, you know, spring, first day of spring, happy St. Patrick's Day, right? All of these things are still a mixture of fun and business on our personal page. The key to social media is consistency. Consistency in posting is what's going to grow your following. Consistency in posting and the mixture of fun and business. Okay, if you only post, look at what I listed, look at what I sold. Do you want to buy, sell, or invest in real estate? People are going to turn you off really, really quickly, right? Now, I'm not actually selling, so this is just like my old business page that I used to use. But, you know, I post about books that I was reading. I post good articles that I find. I highlight vendors sometimes. Um, Wendy in Winston-Salem. She does scheduled social media posts and it's like, I, I think I'm getting this right, Motivational Monday. So she posts something motivational, whether it's a quote, an image, a story, a video. Wednesday, she does a hump day recipe, something easy for the people, like a one sheet pan recipe or pick up these five ingredients from the grocery store and have dinner ready for 30 minutes for your family. And then Friday, she does Funny Friday, right? So she posts something funny, in the month of October, she does Freaky Friday and she posts a scary local story on Friday for the month of October, okay? So that's just an example to give consistency of content, right? We're always going to be posting, I just listed this open house, 
just sold this under contract in 24 hours. Is my personal Facebook account private? No, it is not. Does, does that mean yours shouldn't be? Not necessarily. Um, I got into real estate in 2008 and Facebook kind of came to be that year. So it's just always been a part of my business, right? Some people might choose to not make, make social media part of your business and that's okay, right? It's all of our business, but this is the easiest, cheapest way to meet as many people as possible. Is it possible to schedule posts through command? Yes, yes, you can schedule posts through command. Now here's tips and tricks for you. And I got this from another agent, um, Rachel, Rachel Adams Lee. So she does a lot of research into Facebook's algorithms and Instagram's algorithms and all that kind of stuff. And so what she taught in her class, and if you haven't looked her up, please do follow her on Facebook. I'm not trying to steal her thunder, but it was a quick tip that she gave in a class that I was in. And that is that she does schedule some, some posts to go out automatically. But if you do that, do nothing but scheduling your post out, what's going to happen is the algorithm doesn't like it and it's going to make you less visible to people because the algorithm wants you engaged in the platform. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't plan out your posts, okay? It doesn't mean you shouldn't plan out your post ahead of time. So she said she used Google Keep, okay? So if you don't know what Google Keep is, it's just part of Google. You can have it on your phone. You can have it on your computer, right? And I made a quick one so you guys could see it. So what she showed was that she used Google Keep. She typed out her messaging, what she wanted to do. And then she, if she was using some kind of an image, she had the image there in Google Keep. She had it scheduled for when she wanted the post to go out. Rachel Adams Lee is her name. Um, and she, you know, it, it does ding me in my Google and tells me that I need to post this. But I already, she sits down and already schedules out what she wants, gets the content together so that when it pops up, she can just go ahead and do it. And then someone in that class said, well, you know, I want to connect my Instagram to my Facebook so that when I post it on one, it shows up on the other. She said, do not do that. Post it on Facebook, then go to Instagram and post it. Because again, the algorithm wants you to be engaged with the platform and you won't get as much visibility if you do that. Okay, so do you have to abide by that? No, I'm just telling you as she's like a master marketer and that was her um, recommendation to everybody, okay? Now, what I do like to use um, command to post and schedule is holidays, right? So we looked at those social posts that are for holidays. So, you know, happy fourth, happy first day of summer, um, all those different things. You can go ahead and make those. And I'm gonna show you right now how that you can schedule those. So what we're gonna do is click create campaign. We're going to pick social post, which is the free social post, okay? I'm going to browse my, ooh, there is a spider. Y'all hold on, sorry. Oh, and I just dropped something on my dog. Sorry, Dakota. Um, sorry, that just totally, there was literally a spider hanging next to me on camera. Um, so you're gonna type like happy first, day of summer. What are you and your family's plans for this hot weather? Show me your pictures of your latest excursion, whatever, right? Or you don't have to say that at all. You can just say happy first day of summer, whatever you want to say. I've already made, I think, I hope a first day of summer post. So I clicked on my designs. I'll look up summer. Yeah. So there's first day of summer. I already had a picture made. So you can type whatever you want to type. You already had a picture made in designs. I'm gonna let it take its time to load. Thank you. Okay. So there's first day of summer. There's my post. Okay. And the first day of summer is, I don't know, I think June 21st or something. So I can schedule the post. 
Down here, I can pick, I want this to go out on June 21st at 10 a.m. And if you have multiple business pages, you can free post to multiple business pages at one time. If you only have one business page, it should already be selected. Let me get the Zoom bar out of my way. You could also post it to Twitter as long as it's under the number of characters. And then you can, you have your time and you can just click schedule post and it will go out on that day. Okay, so then you could do the same thing for 4th of July, Labor Day, Happy Holidays, Happy Halloween, Happy Thanksgiving. You can get your favorite beverage. I told y'all I'd say that a lot. Get your favorite beverage, turn on some good music, come and sit down at your computer and go ahead and schedule out those holidays. Then you don't have to think about them and you can enjoy the holidays with your family, right? Those are the kind of posts that I'm okay with y'all scheduling out. If it is, um, you also really need to do a combination of different types of posts. So some video, some live, some, you know, fun stuff, some business stuff. So a combination of things will also keep you top of mind with the algorithm. But this is how you can schedule those out. Do I have any questions on how I scheduled this? And if you had, if I have an image or... <laughs> If I have an image or post I've made or found, it has to have the KW logo on it, correct? If you are posting to your business page and your business page has all of your stuff on it as it should, that's why I always recommend that you guys do post to your business page, okay? Um, this says that I am a real estate agent with Keller Williams. The law in North Carolina, I can't speak for anyone, anywhere else, is um, within one click, they need to know who you are and where you work and what, you know, that you're a real estate agent, okay? So if you're posting it to your Facebook, it's already going to have that. If you're posting it through command, it automatically drops your logo into the picture anyway, right? But a lot of people say, hey, Monica, you know, I only have 100 people right now that like my business page. And I want my 2,000 friends to be able to see what I'm posting, right? Then you can come to your business page. And I don't do this for every single post. My goal is to take the really good posts for my business page. I share them out to my personal page because that's going to drive traffic back to my business page. Hopefully, while they're there, they're going to like it. And that's going to push my business page higher up into the algorithm. So in order to do that, when you get to your business page, right here, it says I'm interacting as Winston-Salem for Scythe County Real Estate. I'm interacting as myself as a business. I can drop this and interact as myself, Monica Perry, the person. I'm now interacting as my profile, okay? So you can see I only have 121 people that follow this business page, but I have 2,000 Facebook friends, right? So now I could take this post and share it to my friends, to my feed, to my story, send it in Messenger, share it to a group, share it to a page, share it on a friend's profile, whatever I want to do here, okay? So if I share it to my feed, I get a chance to type something with it. Check out my business page for the latest in real estate in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. If I just click share now, it just sends the post as it stands out to my personal page. Does that make sense? And like I said, I don't do that with every single post. If it was something um, super cool, like if I posted something about the interest rates going up yesterday on my business page, I might've shared that out to my personal page. If I got a really good story from a buyer that just closed and I posted that to my business page, I would probably share that out to my personal page. So you just want to do a combination of things to keep you going. Now, what I do recommend is if you are not social media savvy at all, pick one social media platform and get yourself really used to it and get yourself in a system and get it where you're posting regularly before you start trying to take something else on. 
because then you can feel overwhelmed. Does that make sense? Any questions? We good? Cool. All right. So we have those. And I saw somebody say, I'm creating everything in designs first. If I'm using a design, yeah, you know, then I do that. Like, here's my happy Father's Day. I've got that scheduled to go out for Father's Day already. So I made that in designs. And then I scheduled the post out, right? The other cool thing that we have in here is quick post. So I want to show you guys that. Bad joke alert. What's a good sign you're getting a great price for your home? A for sale sign with my name on it. But seriously, as your local real estate expert, it's my duty to make sure you get every penny you deserve out of your property. Send me a direct message for a free assessment. Okay. So I can now click that arrow. It's already written for me. It already has a picture there. I don't have to add anything to it if I don't want to. I could. If I don't like what this says, but I liked the picture, I can click shuffle. Okay. And see some of the other stuff. KWRI, um, if you guys weren't in one of these where I told you that I have, um, that I'm a labs advisor, they have heard our request that we want more of these quick posts. Okay. More and more, please. Also, outfront.kw.com. I taught a whole class on this a few weeks ago. I think it's still on, or I think it's on YouTube. Um, if you haven't gone to my YouTube channel yet. Every month when it gets closer towards the end of the month, like this came out May 25th, I think, outfront.kw.com is our magazine um, from KW, okay? So our magazine is agents. So this came out May 25th. Here are social content ideas for the entire month of June. Does it mean you have to post every single day? No, but it gives you an gives you ideas of stuff to post, right? So those neighborhood snapshots that I showed you, post one of those. Um, show some love to a local nonprofit. Um, is there a home or two that's coming? Use a coming to coming soon design. What's a fun summer night activity that everybody loves? Drive in movies. If there's a good venue around, highlight it in a post. So highlight something local. Juneteenth, right? Our offices are closed on Monday the 20th um, in celebration of Juneteenth, which is Sunday, right? And Father's Day is coming up. So there's all kinds of ideas of things that you can post. So if you're ever lost and you're like, I don't know what to post, here's a good way to get some ideas, right? And the other thing, follow people that are successful with it. If you haven't seen, usually the offices will, will share um, agents that get into like newspaper and magazine highlights for being the real estate agent most popular on social media. Alonda Hawkins in my Winston-Salem office has been voted this quite a few times, actually. So let's look. Here's Alonda, her beautiful children and her beautiful self. Here's all the stuff that she posts, right? So sharing stuff about her clients, sharing a picture with her and her OP because it was his birthday, sharing her listings, activities. She does a lot of lives. She does a lot of local stuff. She's one of our top producers, right? Just listed, just sold. Yes, some of this is on her personal page, right? Follow these people. Here's Alonda Hawkins' business page, okay? So you can see she posted this here and then she shared it to her personal page. Jessica Spivey, yes, thank you. I, I knew that there was somebody in Greensboro um that had it too so look at that 21 houses under contract right so this is her business page but she doesn't only do business posts she does all kinds of posts and she does a lot of lives and she does a lot of stories right she shows activities she's going out and doing so let's pull up jess couldn't get i knew that there was somebody at kw1 thank you for that so 
Jessica's got a business page and a personal page, right? And they don't on, they don't only do Facebook, but that's because they're comfortable with it already, right? So just pick one, get started, get yourself comfortable, and then start expanding. So you can see she's doing Sherwin Williams colors of the month, like just sold, Memorial Day, all the different things that we can post about. Okay. So these quick posts are super easy. We've asked for more. Hopefully we'll get more. Here's another one that I really like that I always like to show you guys. Again, it has, this one does have to be a neighborhood. It cannot be a zip code. I'm just going to stick with Buena Vista. Let me redo it so you guys can see it. That's this neighborhood video. I'm going to click the forward arrow. I'm going to search for a neighborhood that existed next door. There's always more houses for sale in that neighborhood than my own. That's why I always pick it. I'm going to pick Buena Vista and Winston-Salem and click Next. Okay, so it's going to show you. Now, for you detail-oriented folks, you high seas of the world, if you want to go in and make sure that all this is absolutely correct in um, the MLS, feel free to do so. I am, I would rather have it done than perfect person. Um, the whole point, again, is to stop people from scrolling, right? So I can promise you something that rhymes with pillow is never exactly accurate either. Um, and people still go there, right? So if you want to take the time to go in and make sure that this is all true, you can go ahead and do that if you would like. Um, I just leave it how it is. Neighborhood features, top three, right? Those are those neighborhood pages we were showing you guys um, yesterday. It's got all of my info here. It's got my market center information here, my brokerage license number, my license number, all coming from my marketing profile. I'm gonna click next. It's gonna take up to 10 seconds. And I'll let you guys check it out. Please excuse my wincing face. I got stung by a bee yesterday and I'm allergic to bees. So <laughs> it just started like hurting me all of a sudden. All right, here we go. Here's the video. It took me no time at all to get that made. And then you can just go ahead and save it and post it just like you did the other post. You can say something about it, thinking about moving to Vina Vista, check this out, done. What do you guys think about that? Anybody? Anything in the chat? Anybody wanna unmute? Anybody wanna talk? Pretty cool? Y'all are a tough audience. All right. Social posts, we looked at those, they're good. I'm gonna jump into direct mail. These are postcards. Postcards cost money, okay? So I'm gonna preface this with, if you have good relationships with lenders, a lot of lenders will do postcards for you. So number one, that saves you time. Number two, they put one of their lenders on it, so that saves you money because you pay for half, they pay for half, and they do all of the work for you, okay? I'm not saying not to use these, I'm just saying explore your options, because I do think some of these are really, really pretty, okay? So let's look at how to do it. You can go into designs and create your own postcard if you have something specific you wanna do, okay? But there's already templates in here. 
So I'm going to click create campaign and this time I'm going to pick um, direct mail. And I'm just going to advertise a listing because it's just the easiest one. You can do whatever you want. I'm going to do advertise a listing. And I'm going to click create campaign. Okay. So now it says it's showing only my listings of which I don't have any. So I need to pick all listings. And I think that was 4650 Cherry Hill Lane in Winston-Salem that we were looking at earlier. Is that the wrong number? Is it like 4560 or something? Maybe it was 4560. And I closed the MLS out. Mm. I want to find an actual listing from around here. Or if one of y'all have an active listing, feel free to drop it in the chat and I'll use yours. Um, Bradford Place is a cute little 224 Bradford Lake Court. 224 Bradford Lake Court, 224 Bradford Lake Court, and that's Louisville, right? Yes. There we go. So I can select my listing right there. And now I have that going. So I'm gonna go into content and I'm going to select a template from the system or if you had made something in designs, you could upload it here. I can choose template, compact, default, large modern, large contemporary. This one looks like it's got a lot of comment um, commentary on it. 732 out of 350 characters because I'm on this compact four by six. But if I come up here and pick large, which is the six by 11, I get a thousand characters. So if I want more verbiage, then I can put that on there. Okay. So now I've done that. And listing status, I'm just going to say it's just listed. Okay. So now Here's where we run into a problem and it's not just us, it's anyone that uses matrix MLS across the country is having this problem. If we pick the listing images from the MLS right now, see how they have those red um, exclamation points? It's because they're not high enough resolution the way the MLS is, the matrix MLS is syndicating it. If you're in Chapel Hill and you're in Triangle, I don't think you guys use matrix as your MLS. So this may not happen to you. Um, but nonetheless, it's happening with matrix. So it just is what it is, right? So you, it would be your listing. So you would be able to upload your own photo, right? The photographer would have given you the files. You would be able to upload your own, okay? So it's gonna give me warnings that it's too small but it's not my listing, so I don't have a picture of it. So I can see the front. It's got the address, it's got my KW on there, all the things I need. I can look at the back. It's got the verbiage on there, it's got the price, it's got the picture, it's got my data, it's got all my stuff there. I can turn on tracking with QR code, okay? We looked at landing pages yesterday. If I had made a landing page for this listing, I could, sorry about that, I could um, take that landing page, I can search for it, right? I know we made one yesterday, but um, I can search for the one that I made for this one with the search bar, I just don't have one. Let me find one that's an actual, there. Um, so that was the one we made yesterday for a listing. So I could connect it to that landing page. So if they scan the QR code, 
it's going to take them to that landing page so they can see more information about the listing, right? And then it's gonna capture their data in command and say that I got a lead off of my postcard, off of my QR code. Good, makes sense? Okay, so everything on this is done. I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna use the image even though it's, cause I just wanna show you guys the steps. Um, the one thing it's not doing also from MLS is pulling our state in. I don't have an answer for why, but we need to pull in our state and zip code. This is for our office, remember. I'm gonna verify the address. It's going to recommend the one with the four extra digits. And then I have my budget, right? So these are big postcards. So currently I've got standard postage selected for 200 houses. Maybe I wanna do first class. That's gonna show me the estimate of my cost. Maybe I'm like, dang, I can't afford that. I just wanna do 100 postcards, not 1,000, 100. Then it's gonna take me down to 120 and maybe I'm like, okay, that's perfect. I'm willing to pay 120. I'm gonna click save. Everything's done. I'm going to click configure targeting. Yes, I'm sure I wanna create the campaign. Okay, gonna move us forward. And here we go. So now we can edit the parameters of the houses. So maybe I only want it to go to single family houses. And maybe I want it to be specific square footage or the last year they sold if I'm targeting something specific. I always send one to myself. And then you click next and then you could draw if you wanted to change. Like if I'm like, mm, I really need to bring in this area, then I could change it out by drawing myself. Um, but then you would just hit next and you would enter your credit card information. And in three business days, postcards are printed and mailed out for you. Good, questions? Good deal, all right. email campaigns, and then we're gonna look at social paid ads. Email campaigns, I'm gonna be real quick. So once you have sent out an email campaign, it's gonna say that it was mailed. You're gonna be able to see how many were sent, how many were opened, how many were clicked, right? You can see if it failed for some reason. I'm gonna take this one so I can see who opened it, who did it get delivered to, who opened it, who clicked on something inside of it, who didn't open it. Um, I can add tags to the people, right? If I want to. And I can also remove them from the list if I think that they're not opening their emails. I can click on it and go straight to their contact card from the three dots and contact details. I could select this recipient and take some actions on them down here at the bottom. So that's after I've already sent the email campaign. To send the email, I'm gonna click create campaign in the upper right corner. I'm gonna choose email. What is my campaign name? Okay, um, maybe I am just doing brand awareness. I'm using my command email and creating the campaign. If I don't have a list created, I have the option to create that list now. So I need to have a list of people. This is one of those reasons that tags are so important because I have 1500 people in here and I don't wanna have to call through them all because maybe I don't have everybody's um, email address. Right, so I can search by my tags to pare this down a little bit and make it easier for me to get through all of them. And it's good for if I'm directing a specific email content to a specific person or a specific set of people, okay? So I just use that tag. Does that make sense? Good deal. All right, I do already have a list. So I'm just going to pick my list that says family email list, okay? 
and they give it a subject. Um, check out these loan modification tips. I like putting emojis in my email subject lines. Now I'm gonna select design. It's gonna take me into either my templates, which are email templates that I've already edited, right? So if I had done some editing, it would be under my templates, or I can go to the KWRI templates that we looked at earlier. And there was one called mortgage modification. Done, okay? So now I've got it. I don't need to edit it. Remember everything with the asterisks fills in for me so I can just save and exit. It's going to show me a preview over here on the right. And then I can click send and it would go out, right? So those designed emails that we looked at can be used both here in campaign emails and they can be used in smart plans when we're creating smart plans. Questions on that? Okay. All right. Last but certainly not least is paid ads. Um, there is nothing more important about running a paid ad than making sure that you have a follow up plan in place. Whether you're going to be using a smart plan like we looked at on Monday or whether you're gonna be using some other system or something to follow up with these folks, do not run a Facebook ad before you have a follow-up plan in place. The fortune is in the follow-up, especially with internet leads. We're looking at about a hundred to one conversion ratio for something that's gonna get purchased right now. Our leads usually are about, um, 80 cents to a dollar a piece. So if you need a hundred of them, or maybe a dollar 40 a piece, if you need a hundred of them to convert one piece of now business, I personally am willing to spend $140 to get one piece of business because I'm probably going to put about $6,000 in my pocket. Does that make sense? But it doesn't mean that all of those other leads will never become something. You keep them in here and you keep them on that follow-up smart plan that keeps reaching out to them forever. And I showed you one the other day that at the end, it drops them into the bi-weekly neighborhood nurture. That goes on forever and ever and keeps sending them that neighborhood nurture email, right? So maybe they weren't looking to buy right now, but now they are six months down the road. You are the one that's continued to reach out to them for the last six months. So you are more than likely going to be the one that they call. Because when we look back to Monday and we were talking about the why behind this system, we saw that they usually um, get referred to an agent by a friend, neighbor, or relative, 43%, right? But most people work with the first agent they talk to. So it's your job to be the first agent that they talk to, right? We looked at ideas yesterday with our websites of different things that we can run ads on. For example, a home with a pool, luxury homes for sale in Greensboro, luxury homes for sale in Winston-Salem that were reduced in the last seven days. Plus, you can always just run an ad on a single listing. Okay, so there's all kinds of ideas. So the most important thing is to have that follow-up plan in place. Do I have any questions on that? All right, I'm going to create campaign. I'm going to choose social ad paid this time. And we're going to use that Bradford Hill. And I forgot to shout out that agent. Hold on one second. Let's do that. Jessica Ferris. That's a beautiful little house in Bradford. I like it. 224 Bradford Lake Court. So we're going to do 224 Bradford Lake Court as our ad, we're advertising a listing. Where do we run to run it? We can run it on Facebook alone, Instagram alone, Twitter alone, or any combination thereof. But you have to have business accounts on any of them 
in order to be able to run a paid ad. I personally just like to run them on Facebook. A lot of people like to do them on multiple platforms. That is up to you, okay? So I'm gonna choose Facebook and create campaign. Okay, so now I'm gonna pull up the listing. I don't have listings again. I need to change this to all listings. If you don't have a listing, but you wanna run a Facebook ad on a listing, ask, go in. If you're like, well, I live in Bradford Place. I would really like to run a Facebook ad on that. Shoot Jessica an email if she's in your market center and ask her if you can. She might say yes. The only thing she can say is no, right? So just make sure that you ask permission first. I've already forgotten that. Number 224 Bradford Lake, 224 Bradford Lake in Louisville. You are not in Nevada search. There it is, so I can select it. Now on here, it doesn't mess up the picture, so go figure. I don't know what to tell you. Um, but I can just usually say, welcome home. On my Facebook ad, I like to keep it short, sweet, and to the point. Facebook doesn't like a lot of text. Try this. You could be coming home to this. Why does it say that? Because they've tried it and it worked. So I can just say, use this suggestion. Or if I don't like this suggestion, I could shuffle and pick another thing, right? But I'm just gonna say use. I like things to be easy. There was an agent, look on the Carolinas um, YouTube channel. We looked at that the other day. There was an agent that runs these Facebook ads a lot and he doesn't change anything. He literally keeps it as simple as he possibly can. and and runs it and he's gotten so many leads. It's insane. So check out that video, okay? So now this is done. Um, we've all been waiting for another adorable home in Bradford Place. Here it is showing start June 18th. I'm just gonna leave it at that because I'm over characters at the moment. Oh, it's just being really slow. I'm just gonna skip over it. But you could edit there. <laughs> My thing's being really safe. So there you go. That's done. I'm going to click save. Okay. Media. This is the images. If I would rather this be a different picture than the front exterior, I could change it or I could make it multiple pictures that scroll. Speed bars in my way. Okay, so then I would have scrolling pictures if I wanted. And I can even upload a video if I want with the video button. I usually just like to keep it simple. I always include my ownership statement, which just says each office is independently owned and operated. You're seeing a preview of your ad over here on the right. Okay. There's a button that says learn more on the ad. When they click that, that's what captures their information. But that's only going to happen if, under Facebook settings, you make sure that Facebook lead generation form that says it's recommended is checked. The Facebook lead generation form that is recommended is the one that you want to use. The button label says learn more. Make sure it's matching what your messaging is. If you're doing a home buyer seminar and you want people to sign up, you want to change it to sign up. If you're doing a Keller mortgage ad and you want people to apply for the mortgage, you're going to change it to apply now, right? I'm just going to stick with learn more. Now I need to give them somewhere to go, okay? So I'm going to go to my own website. You could create a landing page like we looked at yesterday as well, that is also an option, 224 Bradford, 224 Bradford Lake, Louisville, North Carolina. 
So here's this listing on my website. It's got all the pictures. It's got all the data. It's got the open house coming up. It's got the ask me a question. It's got schedule a tour. It's got all the stuff that I want that we looked at on our website yesterday. I'm gonna copy this link. I'm gonna come back to my campaign. I'm telling them to click this button to learn more. So guess what I need to allow is for them to learn more. So now I'm gonna paste that link in here. So after they click learn more and I capture their data and they come into command as a lead, it is going to take them here so that they can in fact learn more, right? Deliver on what you're promising. Does that make sense to everybody? Everybody good? Okay, cool deal. So now we're coming down to audience. It defaulted to Louisville, North Carolina, 20 mile radius. The lowest radius we can go to is 15. I could choose to run this in New York if I wanted to. So if I find out that people move here a lot from Ohio, I could run it in Ohio if I wanted to, right? I'm just gonna run it around the house. I can make it a custom audience. I can add interest. I know that people out there like different stuff in Louisville. I like baseball, whatever. You can start adding interest in here. You could add, if this was a luxury property, then you could add this. There are so many schools of thought on whether you should add interest or whether you should not add interest or whatever. The one, If I'm going to pick ones, the ones I usually pick are ones that rhyme with Zillow. I mean, pillow, hashtag Zillow, and realtor.com. And I want to do this because I want you guys to see what happens. I was reaching 536 people, 1,000 people. It's gone down to 114,500. I'm still in the green. So if I want to target those people, then I can choose to do that. Some people run it with no targeting. It's up to you. It gives you this audience definition that's a recently released feature. And it gives me the ability to save this audience for future use. So I don't have to choose them each time. Like so. Everybody good with this? Nothing in the chat. Nobody's talking to me. So I'm gonna click save like so. Lead settings, I'm gonna configure these, okay? So what do you want to happen to leads that come in from this campaign? I wanna auto tag them with Facebook ad, Bradford Lake, Bradford Place, okay? Um, I'm gonna create a new tag. I like all my leads to be purple, so I'm gonna add that tag. So every lead that comes in from this ad is going to automatically get that tag, okay? I can also automatically put them on a smart plan. So I showed you guys my Facebook follow-up smart plan. I would have edited it to fit with this specific ad already. I'm gonna pick the one that fits and then I'm gonna click save. So now every lead that comes in is gonna be tagged with that specific tag, and they're automatically going to start on that smart plan that I showed you guys on Monday. Make sense? So if you're sleeping, it's gonna send them that email. When you get up in the morning, you're gonna have a task that says to call them. Then it's gonna delay, then it's gonna do this, then it's gonna delay, then it's gonna do this. If they start talking back with you, turn it off right? Then you might have a different smart plan or you're going to just get into conversations with that person, okay? But for the people that don't answer you, let that smart plan go, right? Good deal. All right, good deal. So next up is duration and budget. It is recommended that you run it for 10 days at a dollar per day per channel, okay? Um, it shows you that right there. What I usually do is run it for 30 or $25 for 10 days. I know it's a lot. I know it's a lot. 
Um, but just remember, you don't have to run Facebook ads right now. And if you decide that you do want to run Facebook ads and you're like, I don't remember what Monica said, then you can just get with me and I can help you run one, right? I'm just showing you guys what the system can do. Some people love running Facebook ads and some people don't. There's not a wrong answer. It's not a wrong answer, right? It's just what's right for your business, okay? Pretty good. All right, so I usually run mine for 25. Monica, what's a channel? Where are you looking at? Oh, channel, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Oh, account, okay, sorry. No, you're good. Ask questions, y'all, that's what we're here for. $1 per day per channel is the recommended thing. So if you've never done one of these before, just run it for 10 bucks and see what happens, right? If you get, um, if you get really good results from it, run it again for 25. If you get really good results from that, run it again for 50, right? So any questions on this, we good? So now I've got green checks going all the way down. Our ad looks pretty, it's ready to go. It's gonna hit 114,500 people as its potential reach. I would hit publish and I would start getting the leads. Now I've, like I said, I don't actually sell houses anymore. I may actually start running ads though and referring out any leads that I get just so I can practice with this and show you guys what works. But I did run an ad for the Keller Williams School of Real Estate and I wanna show you what that looked like. Okay, so I've got this record of it here. $1.39 per lead, 79 people clicked, 18 leads came of it. I can click on the leads. I tagged them automatically. It did put them on that smart plan automatically. A lot of them did answer me. So I was able to turn that smart plan off and just start a conversation with them. And some of them did sign up to do the Keller Williams School of Real Estate, All right? So that gives me the ability to try to grab my downline. I don't wanna leave people's contact information up on the screen for too long, but that's what it looks like when you get those leads, right? And so you get notifications in your app, in command. Smart plans are important because again, the fortune is in the follow-up, right? And you wanna just keep following up with them. I had a meeting with an agent this morning at nine. He's got a new person coming onto his team and he was like, we have thousands of leads, right? There is no bad lead. They've captured those leads over time from Zillow, from Realtor.com, from running ads, from doing this, from doing that. And they're all just hanging out in command and they need somebody to call them and talk to them. So we were talking about what are we going to do with these leads with the new agent? How are we going to disperse them out to that new agent? So as long as you have that contact information, the only thing you can do is call them, right? Reach out to them in a systematic way. And continue to do that because maybe today is not the day they're going to buy, but maybe six months from now is. Maybe a year from now is the time that they're going to buy. If you stop talking to them when they're ready to make that purchase or sell their home, you've stopped talking to them. So they're going to go straight to the internet and they're going to look somebody up. If in that meantime, you have been reaching out to them systematically, offering them value, allowing them access to your website and giving them all that kind of stuff, you're going to be the one that they call when they're ready. Does that make sense? I never like to hear the word bad lead, no such thing. There's just now leads and later leads, good? Okay, we have five minutes for questions and then I'm going to give a five minute break and then for anybody who wants to say to see the team functionality, if you're a team member, probably not as important to you. If you're an administrative assistant or a rainmaker, you may want to stay around and look. But any questions in the meantime? If not, I'm going to go ahead and do the five minute break. Good. All right. Good deal, guys. I'm going to stop this recording and put on a five minute timer and then we'll come back and go over this team functionality. All right. So we are going to talk teams and campaigns for those that need to know about that information.
Okay, so campaigns is something that did get teamified in um, campaigns, or campaigns is something that got teamified in command. So I can switch to my team account for which I am the rainmaker. So this is really geared towards rainmakers and administrative folks that we all know that they run the teams. Um, team campaigns. So it's going to tell you what's new in these things. We connect the account that we want the ad run through, which is usually going to be the Rainmakers accounts, right? So the ads are usually going to be run through the Rainmakers accounts. Any leads that come in from these paid ads are going to be owned by the team. So you're going to run the ad the same way. The steps are all the same. It's just that you're running it through the team. So once those leads come in, we're going to come into our settings. Again, I'm under my team. I'm going to come into my settings. I'm going to go to command settings. Okay. I'm going to go to contacts and I'm going to go to lead routing. So now I can create a lead route by clicking this button. And this can be for team Facebook ads. So maybe for your ads that you run on listings, which are going to attract buyers, right? Um, these are going to be for your buyer's agents. Okay. And so then we have the routing rule. I'll just say BA. Do we want random? That means it's just going to randomly go to who it goes to. Weighted random which means this is an experienced agent. So I feel like they can take on about 75% of the leads, but this brand new agent can only take about 25%. Jump ball, who gets it first? Okay. Then we have round robin. So agent one gets one, agent two gets one, agent three gets one, and then it cycles back through. Or if everything from this ad is going to go to a specific agent, then we can assign it to a specific agent on our team. I'm going to do jump ball because I'm a fan of speed to lead um, personally. So then I can set it for all day, all times. If I have somebody, maybe they're a parent and they can't take leads from this time to this time, but this agent doesn't have kids and they can, then I might set it up by specific days and specific times. But for right now, I'm just going to say all days, all times. Okay. Claim action deadline. How long does this agent have to claim this lead before it routes to the next agent in line? Okay, so three minutes sounds good to me. I can just click next. So now I'm going to give it a lead source. So what this is good for, say that you have leads that come in from realtor.com and you upload about 20 a week, right? then when you upload them, give them the lead source, that specific lead source that is set to that specific route and it will route those leads through to your team members, okay? But for this one in specific, we're looking at a Facebook ad lead. That's the source, okay? I'm gonna click next. And then I can pick which agents on my team. So if I'm the rainmaker and I don't wanna deal with these leads, I wouldn't pick myself. I would just pick the rest of my team members that are agents. This person's an admin. So I'd pick the rest of my team members that were agents and I would click save. Okay. So then those Facebook ad leads would come into the system after I run a Facebook ad and they would get routed to the appropriate agent. We can still have the smart plan set up. The smart plans will just generate from that agent's account, okay? So we wanna make sure um, the first probably two steps of the smart plan are not agent specific. They're from the team, like, hey, this is Douglas Red and Real Estate, blah, 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 blah. And then once the agent claims it, it's gonna divert over to being the agent's information, okay? If we're like, okay, I wanna turn this off, then I can turn it off, okay? I can turn as many off as I want. I can go back and get the ones that are paused. I can go back and get ones that I've archived and return them on if I want to. 
So that's kind of how lead routing works. And then any, ad, any leads that come in from that Facebook ad are gonna get routed out to those agents. They will become the assignee of that contact and they will be able to facilitate the transaction with that lead. So I know that a lot of people have questions on this, but it's a lot for a new agent. They don't need to know any of this. So um, I just wanted to open this up for the end of the class to show any teams that are watching on Facebook, watching on YouTube, um, that this does exist in here for your Facebook ad. So do we have any questions on this? And if not, we're gonna shut this down and we're gonna put this up on uh, YouTube for later in the day. Questions, comments, concerns? All good. I know we have some admins on here. Any questions from you guys? Nope. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll talk to you soon.